the queen of comedy, the black queen of comedy, Aunt Esther. These are just a few of LaWanda Page's titles. To me, she is simply the funniest woman to ever live. You so ignorant. You probably don't even know what a putt. You probably don't even know what a, what, what is a shot pot. <laughs> So stick around as we go over the life of this pioneer for women in entertainment and what happened with life after Sanford and Son. Growing up, LaWanda was born in Alberta, Richmond in Cleveland, Ohio. A October baby born in 1920, just 12 days before Halloween. She had a sister eight years older named Anna and eventually a younger sister named Lynn. But contrary to popular belief, this was not Lynn Hamilton the actress who played Donna Harris in Sanford and Son. As a youth, LaWanda could feel the pull of show business and wanted to put her talents to use. She had no dancing or singing lessons, but she ended up dancing at the Friendly Inn Settlement in Cleveland. While still in grade school, LaWanda's family moved to St. Louis, Missouri. At her new school, Banneker Elementary School, she would go on to meet another kid, Red Fox the meeting that would go on to change her life, as well as inspiring millions more later down the line. Early career. Paige would continue her dancing, but add a new element, fire. At 15 years old, she learned to fire dance and would start an act that was the hottest in town. Going by the name, the bronze goddess of fire, she would swallow fire, walk over flames, and light cigarettes with her bare fingers. Although she would burn herself a bit, she said, if I had to burn to make a living, I was willing to burn. LaWanda would work small nightclubs, but one such club was not so friendly. LaWanda said everyone had a knife in there. You better have one too, or a gun, or something. The move to Los Angeles. Sometime near the 1950s, LaWanda moved to LA. Right away, she took up a job dancing and waiting tables at the Brass Rail Club. She did this job for 15 years. She still kept her bronze goddess act going, touring to other countries, such as Brazil, Canada, and even Japan. Comedy comes calling. It isn't fully known when LaWanda took up comedy. Some said she picked it up while working at the Brass Rail Club. Are you married women? You got to watch these whores. Because these whores is out to get your husband, you hear me? Is that your husband right there? Is that your husband? That ain't your husband? See what I'm trying to tell you? LaWanda herself said when she first tried it, she didn't enjoy it much. Lucky for her and us, other members of the club working in a duo act called Skillet and Leroy encouraged her to keep it up. We saw the potential in her. Same thing Red Fox saw as well. They even told her, you can do comedy. As a matter of fact, if you don't do comedy, you don't work here. Another possibility? Luanda picked it up while working the Chitlin Circuit. The Chitlin Circuit was many venues throughout the eastern, southern, and upper Midwest areas from the good old U.S. of A. While working there, she worked with other comedians, Richard Pryor and longtime friend, Red Fox. Talk about opening or following an act like that equals major pressure. But as we've seen throughout LaWanda's life, she always faced it head on and found major success. A team up act. In the mid 1960s, Paige joined up with the group that helped her to continue comedy, Leroy and Skillet. Now called Skillet, Leroy and Company, they should have had Paige name on it. They toured together with great success, including several comedy albums. Paige even had five solo comedy albums of the raunchy, blue comedy type humor. She would release a clean comedy album after ending the series on Sanford and Son, titled Sane Advice. Red Fox Phone Call Changed History 
The years of touring and doing acts from St. Louis to Los Angeles finally wore LaWanda down. She was planning on leaving the entertainment life for good and heading back to St. Louis. That was until a phone call from a new TV star, Red Fox, came. The year, 1972. Season 1 was done and a massive hit. A new character named Aunt Esther was going to be added. Red Fox knew who could play her better than anyone else, LaWanda Page. Red convinced LaWanda to come and read for the part. Despite no acting experience and a slight lack of confidence by LaWanda, she was given the part. But then before filming, producers were nervous with the lack of LaWanda's working in sitcoms. Doubt began to emerge. One producer said she had to be fired, but Red, being Red, said no. He laid it all out for them. LaWanda will nail this part, and when the first episode ends that night, every woman in the ghetto will be dancing in the streets. Red won out, and TV was blessed with the greatest woman in sitcom history. The Atlanta Daily said Paige's success is like a Cinderella story come true. Many other articles praised LaWanda, just as Red knew they would. LaWanda took a great show and turned it into a legendary show and a must-watch on a Friday night at 8 p.m. LaWanda stayed from season two all the way till season six, appearing in 48 episodes total. Despite the show run coming to an end, LaWanda continued her Aunt Esther character in the spin-off series Sanford Arms, as well as Sanford in 1981. After Sanford and Son, LaWanda Page continued to work in sitcoms and other TV shows. In 1977, she appeared in The Love Boat along with Sherman Do Hensley. you think if he was coming to our house, he would bring us a boat? Come on, everybody likes Sausage King sausages. Put them in your pocketbook. I don't want to put them in my pocket because it'll spoil the line of my tux. Oh, come I'm on. ready, I'm ready. Oh, you hold things up. She would also fit in perfectly with the Dean Martin celebrity roast. Paige can insult with the best of them. When I first met this man, he told me he was a church worker. <laughs> can you imagine? A church worker, honey. That's what he said. <laughs> honey, if he ever worked in the church, it was finding new sins the preacher never heard of. The next 20 years, LaWanda would make memorable appearances in shows such as Martin, 227, Amen with Sherman Hemsley again, Family Matters, Between and different three strokes. and 3.30, I'm not. I'll be watching the reruns of Sanford and Son. Yeah, me too. Por favor, my ice cream is melting. Soon it's going to be hot fudge. Somebody get a sucker a spoon. Gracias. You heard me, fool. Put a breadstick in my mouth and make it tender. Of Hershey. <laughs> and give your woman a kiss. <laughs> it's me. How you oh, doing? Yeah. I'm so happy Come to see you. Yeah. Oh, that's so fine. Yeah. Tell me all about yourself. Oh, oh what you remember? Where you been? Yeah, how's, oh, your, how's your day? Just, just beautiful, just beautiful. Can I ask you a question? Ask away, honey. Who are you? <laughs> she even appeared on Circus of the Stars doing her fire eater act. LaWanda even became a regular on Church's Chicken commercials with the slogan being, gotta love it. Now at Church's, get five new spicy wings and fries for just a day. Bad dog. <laughs> gotta love it. LaWanda made sure to appear in her fair share of movies as well, eight in all, with a few big time comedies, Friday and Don't Be a Menace Return. while drinking your juice in the hood. Because if you're not, I have a pamphlet for that. Well, fuck you. 
Come on, he needs me. I'm the leader. Yeah. You better get in there and clean that room in the next 10 minutes. I'll be walking down the street with three shoes, two of your feet, one of your legs, sucker. Huh? Lawanda Page was a mother herself, having a child who passed away in infancy in 1935. She had a daughter as well named Clara. Marriage wasn't kind to Lawanda, married three times and widowed three times. Her final husband passed away while she was still in her 30s, and at that point she swore to never marry again. In 1981, she became an evangelist in the Holiness Church. Clara would go on to become an evangelist preacher, leading many to wonder if she ever said, Oh, glory. Page's final days. Lawanda had diabetes, and on September 14, 2002, Lawanda Page passed away of a heart attack. She was 81. She was laid to rest at the outdoor crib in Inglewood Park Cemetery in Inglewood, California. Sadly, less than four years later, Lawanda's daughter Clara passed away at the age of 69. At least we know they're together in heaven now. It's been over 50 years since Sanford and Son debuted, and all these years later, people still quote Aunt Esther's famous line. Watch it, Major Sucker. Showing how powerful of an impact she had on society and how strong it will still be 50 more years from now. Thank you, Lawanda and Red, for everything. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe.